I mentioned the table before. It's tempting to want to use this area here as a work area for your notebook or any things that you carry into the lab, but um, it's actually a really bad idea to try and use this as a work surface because any vibrations that you create by putting things on this tabletop are going to be transmitted to the sample. And also there's a lot of delicate equipment actually uh, attached to the chamber and we don't want to accidentally remove any of these wires or uh, cause any damage. So the only thing I use this table here for is to set the samples while I wait for the chamber to vent to atmosphere. Um, in order to open the chamber door, which is at uh, high vacuum right now, we need to disengage the pump through the software. If I actually pull on the chamber door right now, you can see um, it's not releasing and in the entire column is actually shifting when I pull. So I don't want to pull too hard. Um, I've just established that the door is secure and I could verify that again by checking uh, on the software the vacuum status message reads vacuum OK. Pressure is times 10 to the minus 6 millibar right now. So in order to open the door I'm going to disengage the pump. And you'll hear the chamber filling with nitrogen that's uh, nitrogen cylinder that's located in the next room. It takes about two minutes for the chamber to equalize to atmospheric pressure and at that time this door will open easily. There's actually no indication on the software or any place else on the machine that the chamber door is ready to open. You simply have to watch the clock uh, for about two minutes to pass or just keep retesting the door lightly with your fingers on the handle like this. So we've waited long enough for the pressure to equalize in the chamber and I'm just going to open the door again by pulling on this handle and open it gently until it reaches the stop position. So you can see there's just one position in the stage chamber here uh, for the pin mount sample. I'm going to take the sample that I mounted earlier with the gold nanoparticles on carbon at the top, the 12 o'clock position, and then at the 3 o'clock position is the, the yellow tin sphere sample. I'm going to put the pin into the hole in the stage and then there's a set screw on the side of this that I can tighten just with my fingers and that keeps the holders stationary so that there's no vibration and it also acts to ground the sample. When you're imaging a sample with the electron beam, the excess uh, current has to go someplace. So uh, if your sample is conductive and you're, um, you're bombarding it with electrons, it needs to have a pathway to ground to conduct that current away once the imaging is done. Uh, by tightening the screw on the side of that uh, pin mount, we're actually completing the ground circuit so that the sample can dissipate the charge after the imaging uh, is, is done. So that's tightened, sample secure. When I close this chamber door, the sample is actually going to slide in underneath the detector. Um, this chamber will accommodate a sample up to 50 millimeters in length and about 20 millimeters in height. Uh, I want to make sure before I close the door though that the sample isn't too tall otherwise it'll run into the detector uh, when I close the chamber door. So I'm going to measure the height of the sample with what we call the elephant ear just by placing this small gauge on the stage alongside the sample. And you see there's a five millimeters marked. Um, that represents five millimeters of clearance from the detector. So anything that's closer than five millimeters to the detector is too tall to be accommodated in, the, in this chamber and it would have to be remounted before we could look at it. But as you can see that all of these samples are well below five millimeters in height so it's safe for me to close the chamber door. So I'll just remove the elephant ear. And then I'll push the chamber door closed while I'm watching on the CCD camera to make sure that the sample slides in underneath the detector and it's not approaching the height of the, de the detector. Once the chamber door is closed, I'll hold it with one hand and re-engage the pump. It takes about two minutes before it reaches vacuum. Uh, at that time we can open the column valve and actually view the sample. Most of the software that we're going to use today is uh, located in the first three tabs, magnification, beam, and scan. And also the four submenus on the right are the blue bars, vacuum, beam, video, and stage. While the chamber is pumping down, you can do two things. The first is you want to center the sample on the stage. 
And the second thing you want to do is set the beam conditions that you're going to use to image the sample. The first menu here is accelerating voltage, which can go anywhere from 0.5 keV to 30 keV. Lower accelerating voltages are good for fragile samples, like biological samples. Uh, higher accelerating voltages give you better resolution. So any sample that conducts well enough to tolerate the high accelerating voltage, 30 kV or 20 kV, you want to use that um, because it will give you a better image in the end. Spot size then ranges from 1 to 7, 1 being the smallest diameter of electron beam and 7 being the largest. Uh, spot size 1 also has the least current and so it's again less damaging uh, and it's also the highest resolution but because it has less current it also has more noise so it's a higher uh, or lower signal to noise ratio. So I'm just going to set this one to 30 kV because our standard sample is a really good conductor and it can tolerate this without any difficulty. And then you see that the, under the beam menu the button has changed to 30 kV so it reflects the actual accelerating voltage that you're going to use. Uh, also in the data bar down here you can see accelerating voltage has changed to 30 kV. Spot size 3. Open the stage submenu and that brings up a small map of where my sample is located. The X on this map indicates uh, the center position where the beam is actually coming out. In order to recenter the sample, I'm just going to left double click at the center of the crosshairs and you'll see the sample move to the center position on the CCD monitor. Alright, after I've centered the sample I need to close the stage submenu in order to see all of the options that are beneath it again. So I shrink the stage submenu and you see it brings the vacuum beam and video back up so that I can monitor those conditions. Under the vacuum submenu, you see this status message now reads vacuum OK and the pressure is 1.2 times 10 to the minus 4 millibar. The actual reading of pressure in the chamber is not as important as the status message that says vacuum OK. As long as it says vacuum OK, you know the pressure is low enough that you can open the column valve. The upper column where the electron gun is located is at ultra high vacuum. It's usually at about 10 to the minus 10 millibar. If you try to open the column valve before the chamber has reached a low enough pressure, it can crash the vacuum in the column itself. And there's an interlock to prevent that from happening. Uh, but that's the, the indication that we're waiting for, that the chamber pressure is low enough that you can actually open the column valve without affecting the vacuum in the upper column. So once it reads vacuum OK, I can start the beam by clicking on this uh, 5 kV button in the beam submenu. When I do that, you hear the column valve open. That means the upper column is open to the chamber and the beam is coming through to hit the sample. The picture that we get initially is going to be pretty bad. So uh, there are a number of things that we can do to improve this.